In this video, I think it's time to share my story on how I went from being born in one of the most deprived parts of the UK to now earning over $100,000 per month just from my laptop. So the time has come to finally give you a bit more of a, a lowdown on, on my story and how I got to where I am. So if you follow me on my channel, you will know that it has been going very well for me recently. Um, I've been earning crazy amounts of money, like hundreds of thousands of dollars per month. I've recently just got this award from ClickBank, the largest affiliate marketplace in the world. And they give me this award for generating over a quarter of a million dollars in sales on their platform last year. Um, and I've, I've received other awards and I've been a top affiliate for, for lots of different products. The last couple of days, I've been generating over $20,000 per day. So yeah, it has been going well, but it's not always been like that. And, and someone kind of said something to me on Instagram the other day about, about my story or how broke I was or something like that. And I think people don't really realize where I've come from and, and what it's taken to get to where I am today. So I thought it'd be a good idea just to sit down and kind of explain my story because it's not just happened overnight. And people might see these screenshots or see these awards and think he's lucky that he's got that or he's just been in the right place at the right time. But what you don't realize is that I have tried lots and lots of different things over the years and every single one of them failed until things started working. And I kind of want to explain some of those things, but also explain kind of what I came from and to give you a bit of motivation that if you are broke or if you're in a not a very good situation at the moment, if you keep trying and keep pushing through, you can get to a point where you're successful and the key is just not to give up and keep pushing forward. And you'll start to see that as I explain more about how I got to where I am and, and all of the crazy things that I've tried over the years. So let's just take it back just to explain kind of how broke I really was. So I was born in Manchester um, on a council estate which is usually bad enough, but I was born on the most deprived place to live in the UK. This was like an official um, thing, and it was, it was once named the most deprived place, Harper A, um, in North Manchester. Um, and that was while I was living there. So it was a pretty tough start in life. I mean, there wasn't any opportunities, and I lived in Moston, which was like close by to that as well, which is just as rough. Um, and just to give you a picture, it's very similar to like the TV show Shameless, the UK version. So very rough, like, Lots of drugs, lots of crime. No one went to school. N most people didn't have jobs. Like, if you got a job in my kind of local area, you was considered to be successful. If you got a local job at the local warehouse, then you, you're doing well in life. So that's kind of the aim, to get a job and then you're doing well. And most people didn't have jobs. So that was what I was brought up in. But for some reason, even from such a young age, living in that environment, I always wanted more. I had this spark inside me and I don't actually know what it was from because I had no one above me to kind of like, it was it was doing well in life that I could look up to. And this was kind of before the internet and before like social media. So I couldn't follow any inspirational Instagram pages or YouTube channels like this. I was just kind of in this bubble, but I knew that I wanted more. And one thing that I did is I always went to school kind of like, because I knew that was kind of my ticket out of there. And I knew that education and learning stuff would have helped me get out of that environment. That was the only way out. So I went through school. But I, one of the earliest memories that I remember was actually, I think I was probably about 11. Um, and me and my mate from school, we found a fiver on the floor, five pound on the floor. Um, and I was thinking about this before, and it's pretty crazy because rather than just spending that fiver on sweets like any other kid would do, um, we actually went to the local market and we bought like a multi-packet of cakes, right? And it was all individually wrapped. And then what we decided to do was sell those cakes individually for like a pound each or something, just double our money. And we was going around knocking on doors selling this list, individual packet of cakes. And I mean, <laughs> it's funny to think about it now because people bought them off us, but they probably bought them off us because they was having pity on us because they thought, who are these poor kids knocking on the door trying to sell these cakes? Um, but we managed to, to, to make some money from that. And then I just remember trying loads of different things like that, I kept reinvesting the money and buying random things and selling um, cakes or like some stupid like yucky yo balls, these little toys that everyone was playing with in school. It's like jelly things. We was buying and selling them. And that was kind of the first start into like entrepreneurship. And I was, I was kind of, we was making bits of money here and there. And the, the kid that I was doing that with, he actually ended up going to jail. Um, I don't know what he went to jail for, but it just goes to show you that we were both very similar. We were a very similar position in our lives. We both had that entrepreneurial spirit um, and he decided to take a different route, um, which I just thought was quite interesting because it shows you that like 
this, you can go down any path in life. And that upbringing that I had, I could have easily gone down a life of crime. A lot of people in my current circle, my circle, they've kind of gone into a life of crime or not having jobs and things like that. And I managed to go the right way, which I'm so thankful for. And I managed to, to, to break away from that eventually. So let's fast forward to when I left school. So I left school at 16. And a lot of people don't know this, but I actually managed to get a, um, onto a training program and apprenticeship training scheme which was given to underprivileged kids and it helps them break into TV production. So I was working in TV production at the age of 16 as a trainee and the, the scheme was designed to help working class underprivileged people break into this middle class industry, which is, is very well known for being a very middle class industry and like the BBC is very middle class and it was kind of to, to get our foot in that door. So I got that opportunity and I managed to go to this interview process and fight off a load of people to actually get a position on that. There's only 20 places on the entire scheme. And it was amazing. And I think that was a real big stepping stone as well, because that allowed me to actually get out of my current situation, um, being in this council estate and in this, this area where no one actually progresses in life. Um, and, and it was kind of a juxtaposition because I was working alongside these kind of posh people, these middle class people in TV production, some celebrities and stuff. And I was going home in the evenings back to my council estate um, where my mum's struggling to get food on the table and she's doing everything she can to, to get food on the table. So it's very, very strange time. Um, but I was going there with like a professional head on and trying to break into this TV industry. But again, I think that gave me another fire in my belly to show me what was possible. And if you break out of this, you, will, you can have a better life. Uh, and it kind of gave me a bit more drive to continue pushing forward. So during that time of working in TV production as a runner, as I was in between jobs, because it was very like sporadic, the work that I got, I always kept coming back to trying to make some kind of idea work and make money um, in my spare time. And every single one of them failed until I absolutely stumbled across an idea which took off, it worked, and it really went really well until something bad happened, which I'm going to explain in just a minute. But the idea was I was drop shipping, but this was before I knew anything about drop shipping. I don't even think drop shipping was a thing. And if you don't know what drop shipping is, it's where you, you sell stuff on your website. If someone buys it off your website, you don't have that product. You just buy it off another website and then send it to the, the person who bought it and you keep the difference. And I'd never known anything about that. I don't even think there was any YouTube channels about, about drop shipping. I don't even think Shopify was around then. Um, and I, I thought, I've got no money. How can I create a business and the idea was I was selling products on this site and I noticed a really big gap in the market and it, this was a time when onesies you know them zip up all in one like pajama suit things they were starting to take off they were kind of starting to be trendy but there was no like central place to buy a onesie they were just on other retailer sites like boohoo.com and all these other big sites. And I thought, well, I'm going to create a site where, where it's just specializing in onesies. I'm going to advertise it as a onesie site. People can come in and they can buy my cool onesies. And that's what I did. I created this site using like free software. I mean, I managed to get like a free trial to a program called ECWID, which was like a Shopify alternative. I got a free domain on some scheme, which was how to get British businesses online and they were giving away free domains. Um, so I got a free domain and I managed to build this site and I stole all of the pictures off these 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 main websites, put them on mine. And it happened at a really good time because it was at a time when, when the Facebook algorithm was like so easy to manipulate and you could just go viral. So I created a, like a, I had no money for adverts, obviously. So I created a post, which was um, share this to win a onesie or something like that. And basically loads of people started sharing it and loads of people started liking my page. And then the sales started coming in and I was getting sales for my onesies. And this was over like a week or two and I felt like I'd absolutely cracked it. I was like, I have cracked business. I am now a businessman. Um, I was probably like making like 50 pound a day or 100 pound a day over the course of a few days. It was nothing special. But at the time it felt like I'd cracked it. So here's where the bad thing happened. So I ended up getting a knock on the door a few days later. And I was living with my mum at this time in my council house. And I looked out the window and it was like a woman in a suit. And I thought, shit, it's, it's like bailiffs or it's fucking, it's, it's bailiffs or it's a police or it's, it's something bad. Why is someone knocking on our door with a suit? It's something bad. So I ignored it. Um, and then she posts this like big pack through the door. Um, and then I go on, it's got my name on it and I open it. And basically one of these last retailers, someone had grasped me up and someone had told me that I was using their photos and I was selling their products on my site. 
and they basically were trying to sue me. And they had screenshots of all of the all of my my sites and their sites. And they attempted to they was attempting to sue me, and they was asking for they wanted all of the money that I'd made from their photographs. They wanted me to take down the photographs, obviously take down the site. Um, and I was panicking. I was like, "What? What? What should I do? Like, this is like I don't know what to do." I phoned them up, and I was like, "Please, please, don't, don't sue me. I can't pay these thousand um, pounds like fee that you wanted for the solicitors and all this kind of stuff." Managed to give them all of the money that I'd made. Panicked, took everything down, and it's fair to say, from that point onwards, I was shook. I was so scared, and it did put me off trying anything for a good while. Um, so and then I went back into TV, and I was working in TV and getting jobs and stuff like that. But again, something kept dragging me back, saying this is not the life for you. You should be you should be doing more stuff. You should be doing entrepreneurial stuff. So in between jobs, um, I, I was always coming up with ideas. I came up with like a camera um, site where you could buy and sell cameras, like classified camera site. Um, you can buy and sell cameras without selling them on eBay. I tried that, I built that website in a library. So at that point I was living in London. And I didn't have a laptop, no internet. So I, I used to go to the library every day because I was unemployed. And I used to build this camera website every day. I get like an hour slot on the, on the computers. And I built this using open source software again. Um, and, and I did my logo on paint. I actually had zero money at that point. And I was really trying to make it work. But again, it failed because I had no traffic for that one. And I couldn't, couldn't get, any, get anyone to kind of upload their camera gear to it. But it's fair to say I've tried lots and lots of things and they've, they've all failed most of the time. So anyway, I fast forward a little bit further on and and I was working in TV again and I just thought, this is it. I can't be doing with this anymore. I had a bad, I didn't like the boss that I had at that time. And I just thought, I'm done with this. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit it and I'm just going to make, make it work. I'm going to make my entrepreneurial journey work. I'm just going to make money. So I cut all ties with my job, handed in my notice. And I was like, I've just got to make this work. I had a little bit of cash, like a few hundred pounds from my job that I got paid um, for my last salary. And I just went all in. Um, and I was looking for different ways of making money online. And if you follow me on YouTube, you'll know that one of the first things that I did was it was match betting. So my girlfriend's brother told me about match betting, which is a UK thing which you can do if you're in the UK. It's a way of making money. It's not real betting. It's just a way of making money from, from bookmakers bonuses that you get. Um, and you can kind of bet them against each other and extract some profit. And and I started doing that. I was making money from that. And that was the kind of the, the little spark in me that was like, well, Liam, you can do this. You can do this. You can make money. Um, so I started doing that and making money. And the interesting part is with that, maybe I'm different. I don't know. But but with that, I've told so many people about match betting since then. I've done a YouTube video about it. Um, I, I've told a lot of people about it. I've told my friends and my brothers, and my family, and all this. And some of them have tried it. And everyone that's tried it, they, they've they've made a bit of money from it. And then what have they done? They've just spent that money. They've wasted that money, and then they've stopped doing it. Whereas I was totally different because I was like, this is an opportunity. So I made money from it and then I reinvested the money back into it and I carried on and carried on. And there was a point where I was probably working 16 hour days doing this one boring thing. I don't even like sports. I don't like betting. I was just doing it to make the money. And I was doing it 16 hours a day, finding different ways of doing it, getting my girlfriend's account, uh, making money off those, getting other people's accounts. And I treated it like a job and I actually managed to make quite a bit of money from that. Um, over over the next year or so from that. And at that time, that was when I started to look into like personal development. So I started reading books. So I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, which I've spoken about on my channel before as well. And that changed a lot in my mind because I started to think about saving money um, and, and investing money and, and, and not wasting money and, and building assets. And then I started reading more books at that point. And it kind of snowballed from there. And around about that point was when I, I created my first YouTube video saying I was going to become a millionaire because I thought I can do this. Because I found a way of making money from match betting. Um, I've got a goal. I can set a goal in mind and I can do this. So I created that YouTube channel saying I'm going to try and become a millionaire before 30. And it, it literally snowballed and the compound effect kicked in from there. And I really believe that the compound effect is, is a real thing that really works even with self-development and, and making money. Um, because... I've always since then tried to learn something new every day, always put the money back in and reinvested it into myself, but also reinvested by reading books and, and watching YouTube videos and all that kind of thing. And then from that point onwards, I discovered affiliate marketing 
um, which has obviously led to me winning these awards and making all of this money. And I think the first thing I discovered about affiliate marketing was, was I was making money from match betting. And then I thought, well, I can actually tell people about this program that I'm using to, to do the match betting with, and I can make money from the affiliate commissions. Um, so then that's what I did. And then I made some money from that. And I was like, wow, actually you can make a lot of money from, from affiliate marketing as well. Um, and then I carried on, like I took like the, the ClickFunnels free affiliate marketing course that they had out, which was um, designed to help you promote their products. And I actually found a picture, which I'll try and put on my screen now, which was my office set up. So at that point, I decided, because I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I set this goal, I downsized the flat that I was in, went to stay in like a really crappy flat near where I was from, um, where I was brought up. Um, I downsized everything and I got all the furniture for free, which you might have seen on, on my YouTube channel. And, and this picture, which, uh, which I found the other day, it's, um, it's my office setup. So I've got this broken bed that I got for free. Um, and then on the screen there, I'm doing match betting, trying to make money. And then on the piece of paper, which you can see on the, on the, on the, on the piece of paper, I've got a goal to hit $20,000 a month. And you can actually see if you zoom in that I was learning at that point about affiliate marketing. And I think I was doing like Russell Brunson's free course at that point. So all of those little things I was, I was getting free stuff. I was, I was doing much betting to earn some side income and that was kind of my side hustle. But I was setting big goals and I was, was learning. And that is the secret to, to becoming successful. That photograph there is the secret to becoming successful. Don't waste money on unnecessary things. Keep income coming in by doing side hustles even if you don't like what they are. Set big goals and, and keep learning every single day. And that's exactly what I was doing. And that picture sums it up. And I've continued to do that every day. And then from that point onwards, I discovered um, Builderall, which was a ClickFunnels alternative. So I thought, I'm going to apply this stuff that I've just learned from, from ClickFunnels free affiliate marketing course. I'm going to apply that to Builderall, which is a website builder. And I was promoting that and I devoted a lot of time to that. And, and I made over $280,000 from that. That's what that plaque's for there, over $200,000 on that plaque from promoting Builderall. I managed to become the top affiliate for Builderall. Um, because I, I kept reinvesting time and effort and, and I was working around the clock to make this happen. And that is basically what I've been doing. And then like in the first year of doing that affiliate marketing, I earned like over $190,000 in the first year. And then since then, I've, I've continued to snowball. So over the last few years, um, I've gone from earning like 200K in a year to now hitting like hundreds of thousand dollars per month and becoming like one of the top percent affiliates on ClickBank. And that's kind of how I've got to where I am. But what a lot of people do is, is they, they look at where someone is now and they see me sharing this, this, um, this plaque or the screenshots and they go, my current position where I am is so far away from where he is. So there's no point even trying. I'm never going to get to that level. But you should just continue improving every single day. Set these big goals and keep working at it over the, over the years. And it'll take a bit of time to get to that stage. But then when you start getting to this stage, the, the, the difference between 100K a year and 100K a month is actually not that far. And it starts to snowball and snowball and snowball. But you have to start somewhere. And hopefully this video showed you that even if you've got a tough upbringing in life, you might have had a worse upbringing than me. I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there that have had even worse upbringings than me. And they've got, they're currently in worse situations. And I'm not taking that away from you at all. But there's people who have had a better situation as well. But... No matter what your current situation is, you can get out of it. And there's so much information out there on the internet now. Free information on YouTube. You don't even have to buy courses if you're just starting out. And you can you can make money and you can reinvest that money and you can continue to grow and just keep reading books and you will get to where you want to be. You just need to set those goals and work towards it. And I genuinely, genuinely believe that it is definitely possible, but you need to have the right mindset and you need to work towards it every single day and, and you can do it. So I hope you, you like this story and, and hopefully you like me going into a bit more detail into where I came from and my upbringing and stuff like that, because I've never really shared anything like that on this channel. Um, but if you did like it, can you please just give this video a thumbs up because it really helps with the algorithm. Um, comment below, let me know what you thought of it. And let me know what you're currently up to and what your goals are, because that'd be good to hear. I always read all of the comments. And I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And until next time, cheers, guys.